All right, we are joined our social distance series, social distancing series uh, here on 24-7 Sports Network by WWE Hall of Famer Mark Henry. Mark, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, I got people calling me and stuff, interrupting our interview. Uh, but uh, other than that, everything is fine in the world and the life and times of the world's strongest man. Well, in the age of social distancing, you're still incredibly busy. You're doing backstage with WWE. On and Tuesdays on Fox Sports 1. On Tuesdays on Fox Sports 1. You you got radio shows. Give give out all your where people can find you. Uh, right now I'm on Sirius XM. We're on six days a week. Uh, channel 156 on Fight Nation. Uh, I am the, uh, one of the hosts. Of, of that show and man I, I i love hanging out with dave lagreca he's like the funniest guy in the world and i can't believe they paid me for that uh but uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna alert them to the fact that they are <laughs> well that's part of the reason that i wanted to to get you on this uh on our social distancing series because um rob gronkowski rob yeah man I mean, he had just won the 24-7 belt in the WWE, and now he is coming out of retirement to play football with, with Tom Brady. So does this mean, you know, he's got to defend that belt 24-7, any, any time of day or night. Does this mean we could have some crazy uh, sideline showdown during an I NFL? I think so. If the NFL is, is, is down with it, but... I, I'm. I will watch our truth. Our truth. He. I mean, he could dress up as a mascot. Uh, he could come out of a bin with all the dirty jocks and towels. I don't know. <laughs> anything could happen with our truth. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So gonna watch his back. I mean, you know Vince McMahon as well as anybody. You. You also. I. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. You continue to work with the WWE in a sort of front office role in helping to develop talent. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, I work with talent development uh, as well as I am an ambassador for the company. Uh, I tour uh, the military installations, uh, do all the charitable uh, functions, and uh, do my best to inspire and give advice to the locker room and the, the young men in it and women. Yeah, that's great stuff. Thank you for that. Um, you know, putting smiles on faces is what you do. Sexual what chocolate, do. baby. Sexual chocolate. Um, okay, so is WWE, what do you think Vince is thinking now that Gronkowski, after just winning a belt, WrestleMania, uh, is going back to the NFL? Well, you know that any time that you get publicity. It's not always good publicity, but in this case, uh, it is. Uh, every time somebody mentions Rob Gronkowski, uh, they mention the WWE. So uh, once again, Vince is looking like a a, a mad scientist. Uh, you know, just a Notre Dame of understanding uh, who to hook your wagon to and. Uh, how long is going to ride? Uh, I don't know how long that's going to ride. Uh, they may, the NFL may say, you know what, man, that that deal with the WWE, you gotta, you gotta end that so we can keep moving forward, you know. And, and maybe they won't. Maybe they'll. They love the fact that you know the XFL was something that was worked through the NFL. It wasn't, you know, like the AAF where they decided that they were going to just do their own thing. But, um, and you saw how that worked out. Um, but Vince is, he, he makes, he makes billion dollar moves, man. So, um, I, I think that that's, that's what he's going to do. He's going to continue to let, uh, hopefully, uh, let Rob Gronkowski, uh, have it until it's time to take it. And we'll see when that is. Uh, talking to Mark Henry and Mark, I want to get your Michael Jordan story because we got the last dance going. But you mentioned the XFL because um, you were an Olympian in 1992 with Michael Jordan. And it's a great story. But you just mentioned the XFL and and what's going on there? Were you surprised that the XFL 
has said, I think we're, we're done or we're not doing anything in 2021. Now he's got Oliver Luck, the former commissioner, suing him. What, uh, what's going on, do you think, with the XFL? Just bad timing or will we see it again? You know what? The pandemic is, it ruined it because, you know, it was successful. Uh, they were putting 25 to 50,000 people in the stadiums. Uh, they were making money hand over fist. Uh, there are guys that are have NFL jobs right now because of the XFL. And the WWE worked with the NFL and let them know that they wanted to um, have the approval of the NFL to be more of a feeder system uh, for the NFL. Unfortunately, that, you know, the pandemic happened and, you know, it's out of the WWE's control. Uh, now Vince is, is trying to sell the uh, XFL uh, and somebody will buy it because it was a successful ven- venture. Um, I think it's just good business. If, if you um, uh, you don't want to lose money and you know this is going to happen again, um, as far as the XFL being out there, it's a good investment if you can afford it. Well, I love uh, you and I have known each other a while, and you were, uh, you were telling me this story. And it, initially, you told me off the record, right? 1992. Yeah. And we should, you know, for folks who only know you as a pro wrestler, uh, Mark Henry still holds world records and is the world's strongest man. Still holds world records in weightlifting for the, um, I mean, in the spot. Powerlifting. powerlifting. Powerlifting, excuse me. Um, for raw squat, biggest raw squat ever raw uh, powerlifting total ever. I mean, and you were an Olympian in 92 and 96 and a multi-time national champion in powerlifting. And so in 1992, you're standing there with Charles Barkley and you tell us the story because now you, you be, you're you willing to tell this story now that uh, the last dance is going and and now, you know, you and Michael Jordan are friends now, you know. Oh, God, I don't know about that. Uh, Michael don't even know I exist, probably. Uh, uh, During that time, you know, I I went to the hotel uh, just because I wanted to see people that I knew. And, you know, Barkley being one of those people and uh, David Robinson and Carl Malone. And um, you would think in a perfect world that when somebody walks up on a group of people, they would just, you know, greet everybody. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? You know, what's going on? And, and go from there. Uh, well, when Michael walked up, that wasn't the case. Um, I guess I seemed out of place. Uh, and his response to me was, who are you? And I was like, who the hell are you? And, you know, I started to get a little bit angry because I was not expected that. It was like a slap in the face. It was like walk, somebody walking up and just slapping you. I was in shock. I was like, this is Michael Jordan. And I'm angry. Like, why? Why? What, what the hell? And, um, you know, he backed off. He went, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. I'm, my bad. I'm, I didn't want to come across. But he did. And uh, I'm sure that that's not um, the, the only time something like that has ever happened in this world. But, you know, it had been a long time since that happened to me, and <laughs> I wasn't having no parts of it. But um, the thing about it, the, the one thing about the story that is not told and that I guess can be told here is he apologized. And uh, a lot of people don't you know, remember, but the All-Star game was coming up uh, after that, and it was in San Antonio. And... Um, When that came through, um, he invited me to the All-Star game. He was having his birthday party during the All-Star game. So um, his people contacted me and got me a parking pass and VIP. And, you know, it was all fine and good, you know. So it it all ended. It ended well, but uh, it just didn't didn't start off. And, And like I said, that's a blip on the radar. Michael Michael Jordan probably don't even remember this. And I'm sure like Barkley remembered it. 
But, uh, um, you know, we laughed about it afterwards. You know, it wasn't no big deal, but that's just the story of how I met Michael Jordan. Yeah, I mean, it's you had not started your, your professional wrestling career at that point, but, I mean, y'all are in that Olympic Village together. I mean, he probably was just, like, in awe of you. Like, well, Michael see Jordan, man. I don't think, was ever been in awe. Um, <laughs> I, I was sitting there, like, you know, I, I wish that the situation would have been better because I probably would have asked him for his autograph. I mean, I, I was a fan. <laughs> Instead, um, you were like ready to break him off. Man, I, I'm 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 Mark Henry now. I mean, I'm, I didn't sell a billion dollars in shoes, and um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm 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 not the one of the all the greatest all time basketball player, but uh, I made my mark on this planet. And there's things that I've done that no other human has ever done. Uh, so I hold myself at a high regard, too. I, I'll be damned if I'm going to let somebody walk up and trivialize me. Oh, yeah. How was his birthday party? Live. <laughs> Off the chain. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not a drinker or a, a druggie or nothing like that. Um, but, you know, being a young guy, you know, just barely 20 years old, uh, man, I had the time of my life. Oh, I can only imagine. What uh, candy everywhere. What other memories do you have of that 92 Olympics? And you know what, man? I, I got a chance to see uh, the Dream Team play. Uh, I watched some great volleyball. Um, I'm a big volleyball fan, uh, if you didn't know. And it was just like the, all the people that I met and became friends with that I'm still friends with today. Uh, it, it was just an unbelievable experience. And uh, it opened my eyes up to uh, being an Olympian was as good as anything that was happening in sports on the planet uh, because how high regard that the world holds Olympians. And uh, I, I, I enjoyed my experience. Um, you have great insight, obviously, into the world of WWE, Vince McMahon, but you also, um, were there at the beginning of Dwayne Johnson's career in pro wrestling. What, uh, tell, tell me that story, uh, what you remember about The Rock getting into, to pro wrestling from football? Well, Dwayne came from pro wrestling. You know, his family is on both sides, um, were high in the, in the wrestling world. Uh, his grandmother and his, his grandfather, High Chief Peter Maivia, uh, as well as his dad uh, married the High Chief's daughter, uh, Rocky Johnson, God rest his soul. He just passed away this year. Um, I, Dwayne knew the business really well. And he went to Canada uh, after he left Miami to play for the Calgary Stampeders. And it just didn't work out. And he was like, you know what, I want to wrestle. And he came in the WWE, hired him right away. And um, he came back from Canada with, you know, $7 in his pocket. And um, no place to live. So he moved in with me. And... Um, you know, we lived together for about six months before we both got shipped off to Memphis to Jerry Lawler's territory. And uh, we started working on the, in the territories. And we were the last, pretty much the last two guys that actually worked uh, territories and went all over the place and did the six hours of driving. And, you know, I mean, it was crazy. But, um, you know, he's like a brother to me. Uh, I love him to death. He He's called my kids and, you know, said happy birthday. And, you know, and his, I talked to his mom still a lot. And I haven't talked to him in probably about six months, a year. Um, but uh, since the Fox deal opened up. But, like, um, you know, once you're family, man, you don't have to talk to everybody every day to know that how you feel about him. Well, and what is Vince McMahon's – why is he so successful, Mark? I mean, he took a chance on you. He took a chance on, you know, non-traditional folks in wrestling. I mean, even to Gronk. I mean, wh why is he so successful? 
Vince is not fearful and other people's opinion of him don't steer his direction. Um, Vince is willing to do the work that nobody else wants to do. And he also looks down the road. Uh, he has the unbelievable foresight. Like he can see ahead of the schedule. And that's what a lot of people lack is vision. And the people that have vision that they want to do something before everybody else does it, but they're thinking about how to get it done without it hurting you. And uh, Vince wasn't, Vince is, he was willing to do anything that he asked us to do and, and did. And um, you have to respect that in a human being. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing story. Just like Mark Henry's story, uh, man, we appreciate it so much. It's great to uh, great to see the big fella out on his out on yes, his sir. Court. Yes, sir. In this the age court, of... getting, a little, getting a little sun in my face, <laughs> a little vitamin E. The pride of Silsby, Texas, baby. Yes, sir. Hey, Every Mark, day. really, really appreciate it. Uh, stay safe and keep the faith. All right, man. You too. Good luck. All right, there he is, Mark Henry on our social distance series here on the 24-7 Sports Network.